myself and Sandra for inviting myself. <laughs> and uh, so, um, my plan uh, is uh, to try to convince you that time passes, that it has a direction, and that this direction, the notion of uh, direction in question, has been for understandable reasons confused with the notion of sense of a symmetric relation. And, uh, and then eventually I will venture into some speculations. So uh, I will follow Tim Maudlin's narrative um, in a sense that I will start by discussing briefly uh, the most uh, direct and absolute denial uh, of passage, and then going through some more modest claim to the effect that uh, the direction of time can be reduced to non-temporal uh, relations. And finally, I will move on to uh, my main claim. So, uh, this is a passage, very famous passage by Gödel, uh, following up the consequence of the strange states of affairs, one is led to conclusions about the nature of time, which are very far reaching indeed. In short, it seems that one obtains an unequivocal proof for the view of those philosophers who, like Parmenides, Kant, and the modern idealists, deny the objectivity of change and consider change as an illusion or an appearance due to our special mode of perception. And then he moves on to uh, uh, prove famously uh, that uh, not only uh, is it uh, uh, space time partitionable uh, into uh, hyperplanes of simultaneity in an objective and absolute way but that there are uh, solutions to Einstein's equations that cannot be foliated, as they say, uh, at all, from which he derives uh, this uh, conclusion. Now, uh, I think, uh, I think it, that uh, we have uh, very good reason for thinking that uh, uh, this must be wrong. And, uh, and quite simple reasons. Uh, I will give you a number of... Uh, quotations that go in this direction. I won't have time to get to the details. I and Federico wrote the paper uh, uh, trying to prove this. This is Husserl. Uh, it's certainly uh, evident that the perception of a temporal object itself has temporality. That, uh, the perception of duration itself presupposes the duration of perception. That the perception of any temporal form itself has its temporal form. Uh, where is it back here? Uh, and uh, the direction is one of these forms, I shall. Um, this is broad. It is a matter of direct inspection that the immediate objects of some of our states of mind have temporal characteristics. It is as certain that the one note in a heard melody is after another in the same spacious present, and that each has some duration, as that some objects in my field of view are red or square. It is then quite certain that some objects in the world have temporal characteristics with the immediate objects of some states of mind. Um, so, uh, this is the physicist Helmholtz. Simultaneity succession and the regular return of simultaneity of succession can obtain as well in sensations as in outer events. Events, like our perceptions of them, take place in time. And uh, finally, this is kind of the psychological objects have in common with the physical ones that they can be temporally determined. In other respects, a sharp distinction must be drawn between the two types. A psychological object does not have color or any other sensory quality. And furthermore, no spatial determination. Um, now, I think, I think uh, this is quite right. I think that we can know by sheer introspection that uh, there must exist genuinely temporal relations, and that these are direct. Um, now let me move to some more modest claim. Uh, well, this is how Tim Mullen uh, qualifies the view. This is not his view, but uh, 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 the idea is to admit that some objective correlates to earlier and later must be found, but to deny that this direction of time may be a matter of the passage of time itself. And uh, I think we have good reasons for uh, thinking that this is wrong. Uh, we say that uh, uh, entropy always uh, increases, and 
And this is supposed to be a law with an empirical content. Now, if we were to reduce the notion, the direction of time to the direction in which entropy increases, first of all, the law wouldn't have any empirical content anymore. It would be a tautology. And, uh, well, this is, oops, sorry. The passing of time may be correlated with, but does not consist in the positive gradient of entropy in the universe. It is the foundation of our asymmetrical treatment of the initial and final states of the universe. And it is not to be reduced to or analyzed in terms of anything else. One other aspect that I think is relevant for us is that when we say that, uh, when we try to explain the second law, the typical, the standard explanation, is that the universe began, and note that it began must be taken seriously, and uh, began in a state of very low entropy. So a state that it is, that is uh, atypical macroscopically, uh, of course this must be itself explained, uh, but typical microscopically in the sense that if you let go the laws of nature, uh, they will very, very, very likely lead to uh, an increase of entropy. And uh, notice that this explanation wouldn't work if we just said that uh, the universe has a very uh, uh, high entropy at one end and very low at the other without specifying where it all began. Uh, you couldn't explain uh, uh, things by starting from the other end, for example, uh, and then try to explain how this very, very atypical microscopically state then magically uh, uh, leads up to a state of very low entropy on the other end. Um, okay, now let me get to the main point uh, that I want to make. Does it have a low battery, maybe? Oops. Okay, um, this is Braithwaite. Uh, as a curiosity, this is the owner of the poker that uh, Wittgenstein supposedly branded. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think that it, uh, the scene, uh, if it is true, happened in his room. Um, it is important to notice that the relation of succession, as given in experience, has an intrinsic sense. We perceive directly that there is an intrinsic difference between A succeeding B and B succeeding A. As Dr. Brock pointed out, in the perception of uh, spatial relations on a straight line, you perceive an interesting order, e.g. that B is between A and C, but the series A to C only acquires a sense through some extrinsic determination, like someone transversing it, for example, in one direction. Uh, temporal relations, however, have an intrinsic sense as well as an intrinsic order. But, and here Dr. Brock goes wrong, this intrinsic sense of the fundamental temporal relation of succession is as much an immediately experienced fact as intrinsic order. And it, it is no way derived from the distinction between present, past, and future. I think that he is right here. Uh, MacTaggart uh, made this mistake too, and, uh, and he somehow thought, and Husserl as well, uh, um, as I shall try to explain, uh, thinking that you could uh, create a direction by a sheer uh, uh, section, a partitioning of, of a temporal object into past, present, and future, and uh, with their internal relations. So, but I don't think that uh, internal relations um, can actually uh, provide us with a direction in the relevant sense. Anyway, we'll get to that. Well, this is the idea. And now, this is McTaggart's idea, pretty much, right? He starts with a, a non-temporal um, series here, ordered but uh, undirected. Uh, ordered in McTaggart's case, he thinks, by the included in relation. And then the moving now, if it were real, of course he doesn't believe that there is a, a, a moving now, but this would be the idea. The B series, the series of events ordered by the earlier, later relation, is uh, produced somehow by the moving now. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, there is another aspect uh, that I find unconvincing in my target's uh, uh, reasoning here, and uh, this is that if there is a direction created by the moving now, uh, well, this must be due to the succession between different nows. And, uh, and I don't think that you could reduce this uh, succession to the internal relations between past, uh, uh, present, and future. So uh, I think that uh, my target would do better to presuppose that there are 
uh, uh, relations of succession, otherwise he couldn't uh, run the argument as he does. Um, now, well, this is the idea. So, so temporal relations are directed somehow. This is a representation of a, an object uh, moving. Say, uh, this is the vertical, the vertical uh, axis, and this is the horizontal axis. Sorry, this is it in Italian. This is say me, and this is a uh, you. And of course, if I ask you whether this is representing me launching an object at you or you launching an object at me, you wouldn't know, right? You have all the relevant formulas here, but this doesn't tell you which is which. And how do you do it? This way or that way? This is the idea. You need to know where we started, which time came before and which after. So it is this, these relations are supposedly providing us with a, a direction. So they must be somehow uh, uh, themselves directed, and uh, we shall see how they might be directed. Now, one very intuitive uh, uh, idea is that uh, asymmetric relations uh, uh, always come with two senses. So if uh, A loves B, uh, uh, Antony loves Cleopatra, Cleopatra is loved by Antony, and they have converses. And uh, so they have senses, and it is uh, rather intuitive, I think, to think that maybe it is this, these senses that are uh, the relevant notion of uh, uh, direction. This is an expression of it. In a, a posthumous book by uh, Russell, uh, this is the theory of knowledge. He doesn't subscribe to this view in that book, but this is an expression of, of the intuition that I'm talking about. Might correctly suppose that every relation has one proper sense i.e. that it goes essentially from one term to another. In the case of time relations, it might be thought of that it is more proper to go from the earlier to the later term than from the later to the earlier. Why? Well, because change goes from the earlier state to the later state. And uh, uh, now, um, as intuitive as this is, I think it is wrong. And uh, one of the reasons is that we have, uh, I think, good arguments proving that the notion, the very notion of senses is uh, ill-constructed uh, in an interesting way, uh, as we shall see. Okay. Now, um, first of all, let me point out some difficulties with the very notion of uh, 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 senses. Uh, this is the standard view, okay? Or if fine calls it the, the orthodox uh, view, if I remember well. So it is characteristic, uh, this is from the principles, uh, uh, it is uh, characteristic of a relation of two terms that it proceeds, so to speak, from one to the other. This is what may be called the sense of the relation and it is the source of order and series. Note this is where A, uh, a R, B does not imply B, R, A, there is another relation, another relation related to R, uh, which must fall between B and A. That is, there is a relation R star such that A R B implies B R A. And further, B R star A implies A R star B. No, A R B. Okay, this is a standard notion of senses. The relation of R to its compass is a difference of sense. This relation is one one symmetric of an enchantment. Its existence is the source of series of the distinction of science and indeed of the greater part of mathematics. And I, I shall go back to uh, this idea that uh, uh, the notion of a compass relation is the origin of mathematical science. Uh, so this is the author of view, Russell view in the principles and widely shared. McTaggart seems to have a very similar uh, position except of course that he uh, uh, intends relation as internal, but uh, the idea that relations come with two senses and these are two different relations is an orthodox uh, uh, view. Now, uh, Russell, of course, changed his mind uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this is the reason. In the cases where there seems to be a natural direction, this will be found to have no logical foundation in a dual complex, there is no essential order as between the terms. The order is introduced by the words or symbols used in naming the complex and does not exist in the complex itself. Now, notice that if this is the case, then the whole story that I told you about the temporal relations being uh, directed and in interpreting this as, as meaning that the, the, the fundamental sense of that relation is the one from earlier to later wouldn't work anymore. 
And uh, now I think that there is, we have very good reasons for thinking that Russell is right in changing his mind. Now, a vague expression of that uh, uh, we can find in uh, Peter Geach. Uh, um, this is uh, uh, from Mental Acts. In, in that book, he is in the business of uh, um, disproving uh, the view that we derive concept by abstracting from experience, the empiricist uh, understanding of how we derive our concepts. And in particular, when it comes to relations, he claims that uh, this view is implausible because a relation neither exists nor can be observed apart from its converse relation. What is more, the concept of relation and of its converse is one and the same indivisible mental capacity. And we cannot exercise this capacity without actually thinking of both relations together. There is so much an intimate relation between the two senses that uh, uh, we can hardly think of one uh, without the other. We find uh, uh, an analyst criticism uh, more recent than that in Armstrong, Dorr, William Baden, McBride, Fine, Williamson. <coughs> this is Armstrong. <coughs> uh, A's having R to B is logically equivalent to B's having the compass of R to A. There is therefore just one state of affairs in virtue of which the two sentences uh, correspond to reality if they do correspond. It follows that there are not two relations, R and its converse, involved in the state of affairs, but only one. Okay? Again, notice that if it is right, well then, my uh, initial story about uh, the sense of temporal relations uh, uh, must be false. So we must look somewhere else for the direction of time. Uh, this is the way that uh, uh, Kit Fine uh, makes uh, uh, this point. As far as I can see, it's pretty much Russell's reason for changing his mind. So as usual, he gives us uh, three um, theses that are incompatible. And the first one, uh, given a, a certain uh, uh, symmetric relation here, uh, Conversance says that every non-symmetric relation has a distinct compass, right? Uh, any state, this is identity, any state that arises from the holding of a relation R is identical to a state that arises from the holding of its compass R star. Why? Well, because it seems pretty obvious that uh, if uh, uh, Anthony loves uh, Cleopatra, well, the state of affairs is exactly the state of affairs as uh, Cleopatra being loved by Anthony. Does it seem to make sense to claim that there are two different states of affairs? But we have also uniqueness. No one state arises from the holding of more than one relation. And uh, he wants to uh, give up uh, on the uh, conversance, again, in the same line as we said before, as Armstrong, as Geach. Uh, and this is the emerging um, view of relation. It is essential to the present conception that there be no intrinsic order to the argument places. There is no first or second law. Okay? This is a representation of uh, uh, this view. You have argument places. But he eventually gives up in this, this idea that he calls positionalism because it's suspicious of uh, the ontology of these positions, and uh, he ends up uh, with a position that is very close to Russell's uh, view in uh, the theory of knowledge. Yeah. This is another uh, argument um, that I need to uh, basically uh, exactly uh, the same uh, from Williamson, Suppose that we have a language that, uh, L. In this case, what we are, uh, uh, what we are trying to claim is that uh, if there were um, um, senses of relations, then uh, we would have a, a dramatic semantic uh, underdetermination, mm -hmm. which we don't seem to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and in any case, it would be fatal for my original intuitive view that uh, uh, the senses of temporal relations provide us with a direction. So, uh, here we have x uh, denotes uh, a certain relation, right? R is a real thing, uh, a universal. Uh, and in this case, the language is such that x a b then takes that a precedes b, the proposition a precedes b. Okay. And then uh, we have a second language again. Uh, R uh, uh, x denotes the same real universal R, and this time x a b uh, denotes that uh, b precedes a. Okay. And finally, we have a, a third language. This time, um, 
x denotes uh, the complex relation r star, assuming that there, there were one, and, uh, and, uh, and the language is such that x a b denotes b precedes a. Now, uh, the difficulty here um, uh, uh, that Williamson points out is that if you ask yourself whether English is like, uh, like L1 or L2, well, it doesn't seem like you're capable of telling which is which. Um, it's somewhat similar to, uh, to the argument against metaphysical realism uh, that we, Patnam's argument, for example, uh, it bears interesting similarities to that argument. But anyway, uh, um, we move on. Okay, uh, so remember that uh, we said that the original view that Russell had that is realist about uh, 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 the senses of relation uh, is supposed to give rise to the notion of mathematical signs. And this is how the, uh, uh, it, this is supposed to work. Okay, so we have uh, uh, introduced this relation uh, here. And uh, MRN and NRP by definition is a, a certain power of R, and then this uh, expands to uh, uh, any number A whatsoever, and this is such that uh, if you invert the terms, and you have the converse relation in there. And, and here are uh, uh, where signs come in. Now, this relation becomes uh, plus A, and this, the converse relation, is minus A. This is how. According to Russell, uh, the notion of science uh, is supposed to emerge out of this uh, uh, idea about uh, senses. Now, notice that, uh, remember that we were in the business of telling whether um, this is me uh, uh, launching a ball at you or you launching a ball at me. And, uh, and now, suppose that we replace the uh, variable uh, uh, t for minus t, okay? And this is a reverse description. This is what we get out of the equation. And, uh, and, now, and now, instead of a, uh, uh, de describing this, notice that this is what we had before. This is not uh, a different process. We are describing exactly the same process, just by using a different variable. We can always do that, right? It's up to us. Uh, but we're describing the same process. So if this is me launching a ball at you, this uh, 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 description, mathematical description, is uh, the same uh, uh, process. Okay? Uh, uh, this time, instead, we are uh, describing, we want to describe the opposite uh, process, right? So there is no change of variable, and we describe the opposite process. Now, um, the profound uh, semantic indeterminacy uh, emerges this time about signs. If you notice, if you notice that uh, these are exactly the same, there is no way to distinguish one from the other. And I think that this is precisely, well, this is a mathematical um, manifestation of the indeterminacy of senses. So it provides further ground, I suppose, uh, uh, to the view that uh, uh, um, the notion of sense is uh, ill-construed. Uh, um, another way in which we might want to uh, uh, provide a mathematical description of direction is by using vectors. Vectors uh, mathematically are just objects, uh, abstract objects. They are members of the vector space, but uh, uh, um, what we want to represent are vectorial magnitudes, properties in reality. And suppose we uh, talk about velocity, for example. Velocity derives its directionality from the spatial directionality of motion, whether actual or potential. Uh, a motion is directed because the object is found earlier at the location and later, actually or potentially, at another. So again, you see, uh, uh, it is the direction of time which provides the object with a direction. Uh, and the directionality of motion is derivative. It is grounded on the directionality of time, not on mere temporal order. Remember that order is different from direction. And this point generalizes to all vectorial magnitudes. Arguably, for example, uh, Johnson has argued, I think convincingly, that this is the case. If time is not directed, there cannot be any vectorial magnitude, but only scalar ones. So this is not to, to mean that vectors don't exist as abstract mathematical objects, right? We are talking about a, 
vectorial magnitudes, if they exist. Uh, another way in which we might uh, um, locate the difficulty is by thinking that uh, relations may be thought of as sets of uh, uh, pairs, where a pair is different from a set. Mm -hmm. Imagine what is a pair. Uh, now, you can have an intentionalist approach. Russell, for example, takes this view. Uh, by definition, uh, the pair is defined as the particular relation such that for all x and y, x r of y holds if and only if x equals a and y equals b. Notice that uh, this is a symmetrical uh, uh, understanding, so incapable of giving us what we need, a direction. And then famously, we have an extensionist approach, right? Uh, the Wiener-Kuratowski way uh, um, of characterizing what a pair is in terms of a set. But, uh, of course, a set is not uh, uh, internally uh, directed, but notice as uh, Hochberg uh, noticed, and, and I think he's absolutely right, uh, that um, this presupposes the notion <laughs> of order, because that can only serve as a model for the pair xy relative to the assumption that the thing that belongs to the singleton member comes first. So again, we are presupposing uh, um, the relevant notion of a directed order, and, and so we cannot use this as a way around the problem. And here we get to Peter, who, <laughs> who uh, in a paper from uh, 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 2010 uh, said, uh, in my view, he's, he's talking about uh, the arguments that I've mentioned by Kit Fine, for example. Uh, uh, in my view, uh, these uh, questions that, uh, that are being asked, are there senses or not, are pseudo questions occasioned by the view that the metaphysically ultimate nature of relations is universal. If relations are all form tropes, they do not arise. Where a relational trope exists, uh, to link two or more individuals, it itself is neutral. It depends equally on its various terms. The different case roles played by the various terms in the relation may give reason to highlight the asymmetries among them, uh, the terms. But surprisingly, many of the examples one can bring to mind turn on internal rather than external relationships. Even clearly contingent comparisons such as that Wellington died later than Napoleon uh, 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 turns out to uh, 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 into the internal relationships between these two events. Now, uh, I think that uh, it is correct that uh, if relations are not universals, we don't have the problems that uh, uh, we discussed simply because the uh, principle of multiple applicability, which engendered the problem in the first place, doesn't occur. But notice that if this were right, well then, uh, 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 no relation could be directed in any relevant sense. And um, one way to bring uh, this home, uh, how am I doing in... in yeah, I'm still 15 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay. 15. Um, so one way that is uh, um, uh, friendly to uh, this idea that uh, uh, there are no real universals, uh, like temporal uh, relations, is by um, introducing, like Fulbright did in, in a famous paper called and Next, a uh, sentential operator, right? Uh, this is always a friendly way to avoid a, a, a commitment, uh, or to try to avoid a commitment. Now, we don't need to know the details of the axioms. Uh, we have uh, any uh, 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 axiom of classical logic, and then we have a number of axioms. The idea uh, uh, that von Ritt had was to introduce some kind of a, uh, asymmetric conjunction, okay? And uh, now, well, first of all, first of all, um, let me say one thing. It is interesting for my claim uh, that uh, that there is there are models of uh, uh, this operator that uh, are not directed in any sense, and certainly that are not temporal. Well, one interesting case is, for example, if you interpret the uh, uh, T operator, T is supposed to mean and next. If you interpret it as a standard conjunction, well, then all these axioms become uh, axioms of, uh, uh, of standard propositional logic. 
uh, and unsurprisingly, I suppose, but even worse than that, well, this is how uh, he concludes the paper, T, this operator on the next, uh, as we have interpreted it, is a forward-looking temporal connector. We could, of course, just as well interpret it as backward-looking, and then he coordinates the world of a certain moment with the world which was just before. We could distinguish the two connectors by means of two symbols, say, T and T, and construct a joint couples containing both connectors. Now, the point that we are making is that if you wouldn't be, if I gave you a calculus like that, without telling you which is which, you wouldn't be able to tell which is which, which is symptomatic, again, of the uh, uh, non-logical, I would call it the non-logical nature of directedness, I think. And uh, this is another way to bring this home. Uh, Husserl had um, this uh, idea to explain our consciousness of uh, temporal relations. The point is how how can we represent in one single breath, let's say, uh, um, temporal relations? Uh, and uh, his idea was, uh, uh, now it's known as a, a, a retentionalism, his idea was that uh, we have in one single uh, uh, present uh, a, a primal impression representing the, say, suppose that you're, you're listening to a melody, the note that you're hearing right now, and then uh, uh, notes that you've just heard before retained. Of course, he had also had a, a, a protension, but uh, for our purposes, it's perfectly fine to describe the situation thus. Now, this is one way in which we might uh, uh, locate the difficulty. Oops, sorry. You see, uh, here we have a name. Right? And uh, whatever relations we have between these representations is an internal relation. And now here we are supposed to have the interpreter and next. And this is, I think, what cannot be done. I don't think you can represent uh, 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 these uh, director relations by using uh, uh, a, a, a structure of, consci of consciousness that, uh, that is a uh, uh, um, that presents us with internal relations. Um, okay, let me conclude. I think uh, I tried to argue that there can be temporal relations only if directionality is objective and absent. And I think that we have very good reason for thinking that uh, it is real and objective and absent. The objective distinction between past, present, and future is not sufficient to make temporal relations directed. As I said, this is a, a mistake that uh, uh, McTaggart appears to have made, and, um, and, and Nathan Atlander correctly pointed out that uh, under this understanding of what temporal relations are, grounded on internal relations, uh, uh, no uh, uh, real, genuine, uh, B-theoretic temporal relations can uh, emerge. Um, I've argued that the notion of sense of asymmetric relations cannot be used to provide a mathematical characterization of directionality. And, uh, uh, and this is my guess. Now, uh, uh, this is very speculative. My guess is that this shows that directionality is not a logical feature. By this, I mean that it is not representable by classical mathematical structures. Uh, it is a primitive feature of temporal relation. And, uh, and this uh, directionality cannot be represented by classical mathematical structures. And I will uh, leave you with a somewhat mystical, cryptic comment by Brouwer, who explains uh, uh, what, uh, <laughs> what uh, 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 his idea of intuition is. He says, the first act of intuition, is, uh, if you don't know it, he, uh, Brouwer had uh, this <coughs> somewhat Kantian understanding of the foundations of mathematics, uh, according to which mathematics is grounded on the intuition of time. And this is how he expresses it. The first act of intuition completely separates mathematics from mathematical language, in particular from the phenomena of language which are described by theoretical logic. And recognizing that intuition is mathematics is essentially language's activity of the mind, having its origin in the perception of a move of time, i.e. of the falling apart of a life moment into two distinct things, one of which gives way to the other, but uh, is retained by memory. If the duty that's born is divested of all quality, there remains the empty form of the common substratum of all duties. It is this common substratum, this empty form, 
which is the basic intuition of mathematics. Thank you.